Hi, I'm Tova with Professor Pincushion and today I'm going to be demonstrating on how to do honeycomb smocking. Smocking is an embellishment technique in which you have a bunch of pleats and they're stitched together in beautiful designs. Honeycomb is one of these designs, creating a pattern of wonderful diamonds. This can be used on garments or even home decorating projects like pillows. Now that you've seen an example of exactly what honeycomb smocking is, let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you exactly how it's done. I'm going to go ahead and do my demonstration on this fabric here. Now you do have to be aware that whatever fabric you do this on, it is going to shrink it somewhat. So for example, if this is my pillow and I wanted this exact shape, by the time I finish this, it's going to be a little bit smaller than that. So you just want to be aware of that. So I have my fabric right side up and I'm going to be making marks with my disappearing ink here or the blue one which disappears with water. Either one, you just want to make sure that you can create the marks and then after we finish, we can get rid of them so we don't need to see them anymore. And I have my straight ruler here. So again, we're doing it so the fabric is right side up and you can really do your marks any spacing size that you want. I'm going to do mine for every half inch. So I'm just going to start here. I'm going to do a dot. I'm going to go a half inch dot, half inch, dot, half inch, dot. And I'm going to do several lines. So after I do it to, let's say here, I'm then going to move it down a half inch and I'm going to do the marks in the same position. So let me just do this real fast and then I'll show you what I mean. All right, so that should be enough. If you need to just make them a little bit darker, you definitely want to be able to see them for when we're sewing this. Okay, then I'm just gonna move this, the same measurement, so a half inch, since that's what I chose, and it's gonna be lined up exactly. So the dots are right underneath each other, even if you're moving down to the next row. And you, I'm just doing a half inch, but you could do an inch, you can do smaller than that. The closer your dots are, the more pleats you're going to have, and then the smaller your diamond shape is going to be. So that's the next row. So now I'm just going to do the same thing, moving down another half inch. And you're just going to do this for the whole area that you want this design to be in. Next, I'm going to be doing a hand basting stitch for each of my six rows here. And I just have needle and thread here and a knot on one end. And for each row, it's gonna have its own strand of thread. So when you get to the end, you're just gonna pull out your needle and pull out another thread and start again. So I'm gonna start on this end. And it doesn't matter how you start it, I'm looking at the right side still, just as long as you're consistent with each row. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna go down through my first dot, come back up through my second, and then I can just go ahead and pull this and just leave it flat. You don't have to do anything else. And then do that again. So down, up, and if you want to do faster, down, up. And you're just doing a basic running stitch. So it should look something like this as you're going along. So let's finish this real quickly. So down, up, down, up at the dots and then once I get to the end I'll show you what I do okay we're getting down to the end here so my last one is ending on a down which is fine just gonna leave it flat I'm gonna take my thread off my needle then I'm going to cut a new piece of thread and just like this one, tie a knot at the end. And then I'm going to start the exact same way. So if I went down on this first dot, I'm going to start this one by going down as well. And I'm going to do the same thing for each six rows. When you finish with your rows, you're going to go ahead, take your strands of thread on the one end that does not have a knot and you're going to pull them in order to create 
your pleats. Now it's time to start sewing our pleats together and it's really easy because we're just gonna sew two together at a time so each pleat gets his own buddy. So we have, we're just gonna do one row at a time. So row one, pleat one, pleat two, get stitched together, three and four get stitched together, five and six get stitched together, and so on if you have more than that. I already have my needle and thread and you definitely wanna use a matching color thread for this, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a contrasting one again. And I have it coming out from the wrong side to the right side, so we're still looking at the right side. So I went underneath, so through the back, so the knot is hidden right at the top of that first pleat. And then you're gonna kind of do like a whip stitch. So I'm gonna take his buddy, so pleat one and pleat two, and you can see I'm lined up with my row number one. And I'm gonna grab, you could just pinch them together. I'm coming from right to left, and I'm doing a stitch that's gonna go right over the top of them. So then they're gonna be stuck together in that stitch, just like that. So there's my first stitch, and I'm just gonna do it again, just to make sure that it's gonna be nice and secure. You can do it a few times if you wish. Okay, make sure we're not getting tangled. All right, so you can see a nice little tight stitch right there. So I'm gonna go down right on my second pleat there. So right where my stitch is coming out that I just created. I'm gonna pull this all the way through. So now my thread is on the back side. Now I'm gonna repeat the process, but this time I'm going to the third pleat right at the top again. So I gotta get underneath here. And you wanna make sure that you're still in line with row number one. And if your pleats start becoming undone, you can just pull your strands and that should tighten it up a little bit. All right, so now I'm at three. Now I'm gonna grab his buddy, number four. And again, I'm coming on this opposite side and making sure my needle is going through both pleats, three and four. And you're doing a little stitch over the top. And then I'm gonna do it again, just to make sure that it's secure. And then once that's done, I'm gonna go back through and then I'm gonna repeat the same process for these last two pleat buddies over here on the side. When I finish row one, I just go ahead, put it through to the backside and tie a knot and then grab another thread if you, if you don't have enough. So then I can start with row two. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I already have my needle and thread and you'll notice now my thread is coming out of pleat two. So I'm row two, pleat two. So I'm gonna skip this first pleat, and now pleat two is gonna be buddies with pleat three. So you can see it's starting to create, it creates a, the bottom of the diagonal, or it looks like an upside down triangle. So I'm gonna stitch these two together. So we'll do a couple of stitches, just like we did before. So I come out at the top of pleat two, and get a pinch it with pleat three here, and I'm just, like I'm not going very far down on this pleat when I do my little whip stitch. Say so just a little ways down, because you just want the tops to be connected. I'm gonna do another one. I always like doing two stitches, just to make sure it's not going anywhere. All right, it's gonna go down, and then I'm gonna go up on this next pleat but now pleat number four is gonna be buddies with pleat number five. So yes, this pleat won't be attached and this pleat on the end won't be attached. But when we move down to three, we're going to repeat the exact same steps that we did with one. So each row is gonna be opposite each other. So three, again, is gonna be one and two, three and four, five and six, and four is just gonna be exactly like two where it's just gonna be two of them in the center here. Well, at least it is in my case. So we did this one in the middle. I'm gonna go up to this pleat that's next to those pairs and just come up. I'm just trying to make sure that it's lined up because you wanna make sure it looks nice and neat. All right, 
So pleat four is going to be buddy with pleat five. Pinch them together, do a couple of whip stitches. And then if that's the end of my row, I can go ahead, go down, tie a knot after I finish this last stitch for row two, and then I'll pick up on row three. When you finish with all your rows, you can go ahead and remove your basting stitches and any fabric markers that you have. Without the basting stitches, it's a little bit easier to see my permanent stitches here. And you can see the pleats kind of form what look like X's, but if you look at the inverted portion, it looks like diamonds. Now just to reiterate, you'll notice that one, three, and five, the pleats that you're gathering and putting whip stitches over are at the same points. We have one here, one here, one here. And then I just repeat it with the second set here. And it's the same thing with rows two, four, and six. You're pinching your pleats at the same point. So it's just two variations that you're just repeating over and over again in order to create this pattern. You also notice that it does have a little bit of a stretch. So this is probably why it was popular in the olden days, such as Renaissance time, when they didn't have elastic and they could create clothes that have more of a fitted look. So that's how you do a honeycomb smock. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.